Hi, Kevin here. Today we're fixing pierogi. Pierogi are little dumplings filled with, well, whatever you want to fill them with. I'm going to fill mine with some butternut squash and some sage leaves from my garden. And let me show you the cooked squash. So here's the squash, which I already cooked. And to cook it, you simply have the squash, seed it, and then brush the flesh, that would be this side, with olive oil. Turn the pieces cut side down, and then bake at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes until the flesh is tender. Okay, I'm going to scrape the flesh into a bowl, and then I'll come right back. Okay, here's the butternut squash in the bowl, and I don't think I told you that was a three pound butternut squash. Okay, and then we want to add the sage leaves. And what I've done is snipped off about 10 leaves. They were pretty small leaves. And I'm just going to use kitchen shears to cut little pieces of sage into the squash. Yeah, I think sometimes kitchen shears are much easier to work with than a knife when you're doing something like this. All right. Here's a nice big sage leaf that I didn't quite cut up. I'll take care of that right now. Okay, and then I want to add some salt and pepper. And where's my salt? Here it is. I'll add about oh, a half teaspoon or so. And some grinds of black pepper. And then I'm going to mash this up just to make a fairly smooth puree. And what I like to use is this nifty potato masher that has holes. Works really well. Works almost like a ricer. Yeah, I use this gadget when I'm making egg salad. By the way, you do want to let the squash cool before you mash it. It needs to be cool when you're using it to fill the uh, little pastries that we're going to make. All right, and then I want to have a quick taste. Make sure my seasonings are correct. Perfect. Okay. On to the pastry dough. All right, the pastry dough, or maybe I should call it the pierogi dough, is very easy to make. What I have here is two cups of all-purpose flour, and to the flour we add three quarters of a cup of sour cream, yum, and one large beaten egg, quarter cup of olive oil, and a half teaspoon of kosher salt. You could use regular table salt if you like. And then I'm going to give this a quick stir. Yeah, I fell in love with pierogi when I lived in New York City. There was a, uh, a Polish restaurant on the Lower East Side. I think it was on 2nd Avenue around 10th Street. And they made fabulous pierogi there, usually filled with potato and something else. But you could go in and you could buy the pierogi frozen and then Cook it at home. Delicious. Okay, and you just want to stir this until all of the flour 
is moistened. Alright. Scrape off the spatula. And then roll up your sleeves. I'm going to dump this onto my work surface here. And then we have to knead this just until it's smooth. And I'm going to try to do this without adding any flour, although I do have some emotional support flour here just in case. Actually, I think I am going to sprinkle a little bit on the dough just to get it going. This is just like kneading bread dough. You fold the dough over on itself and then push it out with the heel of your hand. Some sour cream stuck to my finger. I'm going to pick up all these stray bits over here. Yeah, it's a really easy dough to work with. It's so easy to mix. I found this recipe for pierogi dough in Food and Wine magazine. Though I would be very curious to know from any viewers who happen to be Polish or are of Polish or Eastern European descent, this is a traditional pierogi dough. And if it's not, please tell me what kind of dough you use for pierogies. Actually, pierogi is the plural, so it's not pierogies, it's pierogi. And I think we're good. So the dough is fairly smooth. Well, it could be a little smoother. Yeah, so I only had to add that one little bit of flour to get the dough going. Okay, we're smooth. So now, we want to cover this with plastic wrap. Or wrap it in plastic wrap. And then just let it rest for about 20 minutes. Meanwhile, let me fix this. Sorry about that. Meanwhile, bring a large pot of water to a boil. Um, you want at least four quarts of water, okay? And I'm going to do that, and then I'll be back. Okay, it's been 20 minutes. Here's my dough. I'm going to roll this out in two batches. So I'm going to cut this in half. And we'll put one half over here and we'll rewrap the other just temporarily. And then I'm rolling this out in my pastry cloth. We have a little bit of flour. Okay, and then I want to roll this out to a 1 8 inch thickness. And so that the video won't be terribly long, well it's probably already too long, but so it won't be overly long, I think I'll roll this out off camera. But as you can see, it rolls very easy. Or easily, I should say. Actually, no, I'll leave the camera on. I always figure nobody's watching anyway. So, there we go. Yeah, oh, it's such an easy dough to work with. And again, that's 1 8 inch approximately. How are we here? I'll go a 
little thinner. Then we want to get at least 12 rounds out of this. And what you'll need is a three inch round biscuit cutter. And I have lots of biscuit cutters, but I do not have one that is three inches in diameter. But I do have a water glass that is three inches in diameter. So I'm going to be using this to cut out my rounds. Okay, and I think I'm going to pour my emotional support butter into this, or emotional support flour into this bowl. Dip my glass into the flour and start cutting. Six. And what you want to do is put the little pastry rounds on a parchment lined baking sheet. It's just so they won't stick. We're not going to be baking these. We will be boiling them after we've filled them. All right. And then I'm going to roll out the rest of the dough and cut out my rounds, and then I'll come back. Well, I managed to get 15 rounds out of that ball of dough. So, let me put this away. This is what I love about the pastry cloth. You rarely have to wash it. Now, we have to fill these rounds, so I have my butternut squash and sage leaf mixture here. And then I'm going to use a tablespoon size cookie, uh, what is this called, cookie scoop, to fill these. You could use a spoon. Just plop that right into the center of each disc. And again, for the sake of brevity, I'll finish filling these, and then I'll come back to show you how to form them. All right, they're all filled, and now we have to turn these into pierogi. So let me move you in a little closer. So what you do is stretch the pastry, like so, and then you want to grab two ends and bring it up over the filling, like this. Pinch that together, and then, let's turn it this way, I'm going to push in any filling that might potentially come out, and then pinch the edge to seal. And this dough is so elastic that it stretches very easily without tearing. Okay, and there we have a half moon pierogi. I'll do one more for you. Stretch the dough. And fold two ends up and over the filling. I'm going to wipe my hand off here. And then pinch, pinch, pinch to seal. And if any filling starts coming out, just take your finger and push it back in. And I've made these pierogi, I've made pierogi three times in the last three days. Actually, this is my third time, just to get the hang of it. So I can tell you that these seams have never opened up 
after I've put the pierogi in the boiling water. So again, this dough is terrific. Okay, I'm going to finish these and then I'll come back. Okay, I only have a few of these left to do. <clears throat> so I wanted to show you, you really don't have to stretch at all sides of the pastry disc. You can just uh, stretch out two ends and then uh, pull it over the filling. Much easier. Yeah, you'll get the hang of this as you work. Forming these takes a little bit of practice in the beginning, but you know, it's really not hard to do. And I did want to mention that you can fill pierogi with anything you want. Um, savory fillings or even sweet fillings. You could make little little apple pierogi or little blueberry pierogi. And then you could sprinkle the sweet ones with confectioner sugar after you've boiled them. I will be not only boiling mine, but I'm also going to fry them briefly so that they have a nice crisp texture. Okay, and we're all done. So now I need to move you over to the stove top. All right, the water's boiling at a good clip. So now, take the pierogi. I'm going to do, oh, I think six at a time. And just gently plunge them into the water. And then we're going to let these boil, oh, for about three minutes, just until the pastry is done. All right, it's been about three minutes, and as you can see, the pierogi are starting to float to the top. So then fish them out and place them on another baking sheet either lined with parchment or silpat or just a lightly greased baking sheet. Mine. And then I'm going to do another six. And I wanted to tell you that um, if you wanted to freeze the pierogi, let's say you were making like a huge batch, you would just blanch the pierogi in the boiling water for 30 seconds and then you would transfer them to the prepared baking sheet. Let them cool to room temperature. Well, you six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, yeah. Uh, let them come to room temperature and then <clears throat> freeze them. Freeze them on the baking sheet for a couple of hours, and when they're solidly frozen, you can transfer them to another container. And then you'll have a meal almost ready to go. All you'd have to do is take the frozen pierogi and boil them. Okay, I'll come back when all the pierogi are cooked. All right, here are the 15 pierogi. And as you can see, none of the seams split. They look just perfect. And in fact, you could serve them just like this. Maybe with a garnish of, I don't know, chopped sage leaves. Um, but what I'm going to do is give them a little bit of color and some crispness uh, by frying them in butter. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so I'm getting ready to fry some of the pierogi. I have two tablespoons of butter over medium heat in a non-stick skillet. You could use any skillet. I wanted to show you, let's see if you can see outside. We are having a huge windstorm. And I think I heard thunder. So. 
Nope, the power doesn't go out. Okay. Actually, if the power goes out, I'm okay because we bought a generator recently. Okay. So now, just you want the foam to subside in the pan before you start frying. So I'm, as you can see, the foam is starting to subside already. And if you don't want to fry your pierogi, as I said, you can serve them just like this. And I said that you could top them with sage leaves because there's sage in the filling. But you could also just top them with melted butter. That would be delicious. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add my pierogi. Okay, can you hear the thunder? six of these, and I'm going to let them fry just until they're spotty brown on each side, so we'll come back. All right, the pierogi are crisp and spotty brown, so I'm going to plate them up. I'm putting in them in this pretty bowl that I bought at an estate sale. And I looked at the bottom of the bowl and it said, made in Czechoslovakia. So, perhaps this bowl held pierogi at one time in the past. And then, you ready for this? I'm going to pour the melted butter over the pierogi. Do this so you can see. Maybe not all of the butter, just some of it. All right, let's have a taste. So I've just cut one of the pierogi in half. I hope it doesn't fall off the fork. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, taste. Oh, it's crunchy. On the outside, smooth and Butternut squashy and sagey on the inside. Absolutely delicious. And I just had a wicked thought. You know what goes really well with butternut squash? Pure maple syrup. Now, this pierogi absolutely doesn't need maple syrup. So this is just another layer of flavor. Let's try. To your health. Okay, I'm going to finish this delicious little meal while watching the lightning and listening to the thunder outside. I hope you'll give pierogi a try. Again, you can fill it with anything you'd like. Really, all you need is the recipe for the pastry dough, which works out really, really well. And please subscribe if you haven't already. Please tap the little bell icon to receive notifications. And please post a comment below. I read all of your comments. And believe me, I do love hearing from you. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.